ඔයගොල්ලෝ මාව තාම subscribe කරලා නැත්තම් මේ රතු පාට බොත්තම බන්න ඒ වගේ මන් දාන අලුත් videos පිළිවන් දැන ගැනීමට මේ bell icon එක click කරලා ඕල් කියන එක ඔබන්න okay guys uh, uh, so today we are going to talk about carbohydrate metabolism uh so um in this uh the main uh the first reaction of this is glycolysis so glycolysis what is the general reaction of glycolysis in this uh, glucose is turned into two molecules of pyruvate and energy is freed up this energy is converted into atp and nadph so uh so uh when glucose is turning to uh two molecules of pyruvate this does not happen in one reaction uh just like this okay 10 small small reactions occur between it which leads to the formation of pyruvate i will show you guys a picture of this so here you can see uh the total pathway of uh glycolysis uh starting from glucose and ending from pyruvate and here you can see all the 10 reactions so uh this pathway doesn't depend on oxygen that is actually an important point you guys have to remember that and uh glycolysis mainly occur in cytoplasm This is because all the enzymes needed uh, for glycolysis are located in the cytoplasm. Um so firstly if we talk about the first reaction this is also known as the activation step. In this glucose is turned into glucose 6 phosphate with the help of glu- uh, glucokinase and hexokinase. This uses one molecule of ATP um uh, so when glucose so uh when a person eats a, like a huge meal with carbohydrates and everything uh the nutrients are getting absorbed as glucose right so this glucose enters into the blood stream and then it enters into the cell of the person and in the cell uh glucose is phosphor phosphorylated So as you guys know that uh, when a sugar molecule is phosphorylated it cannot cross the cell membrane again so basically glucose is now trapped inside the cell right so this is actually the main purpose of uh, this reaction is to prevent glucose from going outside the cell so the phosphate group is seen in the sixth atom So next the uh, next glucose 6 phosphate with the help of isomerase is turned into fructose 6 uh, phosphate still the phosphate mo- uh, group is seen in the 6th carbon atom then the fru- fructose 6 uh, phosphate with the help of phospho uh, fructokinase 1 turns into fructose 1 bisphosphate and here one more another molecule of atp is used up so up to this point altogether two molecules of atp was used up okay so then we stop from fructose 16 bisphosphate right so this fructose 16 bisphosphate with the help of aldolase turns into glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate and a uh, dihydroxyacetone phosphate this is the fourth reaction and in this uh, dihydroxyacetone phosphate with the help of isomerase is turned into another molecule of glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate so at the end of this reaction you will have two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate so this is the fifth reaction Next this uh, two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate with the uh, is turned into 1,3 bisphosphoglycerate. Here because two molecules of uh, this is used uh, two molecules of NAD D+ plus is used up and two molecules of NADH is uh, synthesized. 
This reaction actually uh, vastly depend on the availability of NADP plus in the cell. So if it's if it's not available, this reaction does not occur. So uh, in RBC specifically, uh, so this reaction is actually uh, pretty specific to the red blood cell. Uh, one three bisphosphate with the help of bisphosphoglycerate mutase is turned into two three bisphosphoglycerate. Uh, uh, now two three bisphosphoglycerate is uh, in other cells you can see this in very trace amounts, but in RBC it is like very high because it helps with the oxygen delivery within the cell okay so this is actually pretty specific to the rbc and then next uh, so we stopped from one three bisphosphoglycerate right so this one three bisphosphoglycerate is then turned into three phosphoglycerate and here two molecules two molecules and two molecules of atp is made this is a substrate level phosphorylation next three phosphoglycerate is turned into two phosphoglycerate and then two phosphoglycerate is turned into phosphenol pyruvate and phosphenol pyruvate with the help of pyruvate kinase is turned into two molecules of pyruvate so there you have your two molecules of pyruvate okay so in this reaction also two molecules of atp is made up so this pyruvate here this uh, with the help of pyruvate dehydrogenase turns into uh, acetyl coenzyme which enters the citric acid cycle okay that's the next step of carbohydrate metabolism glycolysis is like the first reaction of it so uh, now we have pyruvate inside the cytosol right so if the cell by any chance if there's low oxygen tension this pyruvate with the help of lacto -D lactate dehydrogenase is turned into lactase nadh is used up so if a person let's think like if a person is like doing like very harsh exercises and everything the nadh gets reduced right because it is needed for the energy and everything um nad so nad d plus is reduced okay so then this uh so the cell is deficient of this so this actually stimulate these reactions to occur and then eventually lactate even though this happens like eventually lactate like if you do like very harsh exercises lactase is going to continue accumulating and then ph is going to go down because it's acidic and water is going to accumulate and then membrane integrity within the cell is lost and then uh, the cellular protein inside leaks out of the cell and eventually the cell dies okay uh, so this is actually seen in myocardial infarction, which is a heart attack. Uh, you can see this entire process happening. Uh, okay, so here, so that is like so. Um, I so that is like the ten reactions of the glycolysis pathway. Okay. I'll show you guys the picture again here, starting from glucose and ending with pyruvate and all the 10 reactions takes place. Next, uh, let's talk about the energy generation of the glycolysis. Now, do you guys remember that I mentioned in two reactions, two ATP molecules were used, up, right? So, how many ATPs and how many NADH is produced in it? So in these reactions, in these three reactions, energy is produced. Here, when glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate turns into this, uh, two molecules of NADH is produced. And when uh, this turns into this two molecules, 
of ADP is produced and when this turns into pyruvate two molecules of ATP is produced so altogether we have four molecules of ADP and here we got two molecules of NADPH right so NADPH uh, this is one NADH molecule is equal to uh, 2.5 ATP molecules okay so technically then we have five ATP molecules so with this 4 and 5 we have 9 ATP molecules is synthesized but because glycolysis already uses to 2 ATP molecules in the end we have a total of 7 ATP molecules newly synthesized in the cell so let's talk about the importance of glycolysis so these intermediates are often used as precursors for vital pathways and some provide common intermediates with other pathways. So regulation of glycolysis. The main regulatory enzyme is uh, PFK1. This uh, turns uh, fructose 6-phosphate into a uh, fructose 1,6-bisphosphate this is activated by fructose 2,6-bisphosphate and AMP and it is inhibited by ATP and citrate so you guys just have to study and remember these molecules okay uh, then this uh, here the, uh, I said that fructose 2,6-bisphosphate this is a new molecule uh, helps to activate PFK1, right? So this uh, fructose 6-phosphate, when it turns into fructose 2,6-bisphosphate uh, with the help of uh, PFK2, this helps to activate this reaction and the reverse reaction is activated by this. So FBP2 technically inhibits the forward reaction and the backward reaction is inhibited by PFK2. So these two enzymes are under the control of insulin and glucagon regulation. So hexokinase, hexokinase is inhibited by glucose 6-phosphate. Uh, this is like seen in the very first reaction, these two are seen in the very first reaction. Glucokinase is regulated by glucokinase regulatory protein. And then uh, in the 10th reaction, when phosphoenol pyruvate turns into pyruvate, uh, the pyruvate kinase is activated by fructose 1,6-bisphosphate and it is inhibited by glucagon. So if we take a blood sample of a patient to like estimate the blood glucose level, what is the first thing that we should do? We should inhibit the glycolysis, right? Because otherwise uh, the glucose molecules are going to get used up. Okay, so for this, fluoride is added. Fluoride has a way to, uh, has a certain way that it inhibits the, inhibits glycolysis. So then you can get the proper uh, level of glucose. Uh, fluoride actually inhibits enolase and uh, stops converting to phosphoglycerate into PEP. Now let's talk about the hormonal regulation of uh, glycolysis. When the consumption of carbohydrates is very high or when insulin is very high because you get something like really sugary, uh, these hormones, these enzymes actually, glucokinase, uh, phosphofructokinase, pyruvate kinase becomes very high. And these enzymes, uh, this increases gene transcription and enzyme synthesis. And also when the plasma glucagon level is very high and insulin is like very reduced, all three enzymes reduces and these enzymes as you all know are they're needed for the reactions of the glycolysis, right? So the increases and decreases of these enzymes directly affect the pathway. So clinical significance of 
glycolysis. Pyruvate kinase deficiency. Uh, I will show you guys the reaction. Oh, here, here. So, when a pyruvate kinase is deficient, this is the reaction. What do you think is going to happen? Glycolysis is going to go down and the ATP production is going to go down. Then, the biconcave uh, shape of the RBC is not maintained. So then, uh, this RBC becomes like weirded out in shape and everything. So it is phagocyte to phagocytes in the uh, phagocytosis happen and lysis happen and then hemolytic anemia is resulted and also when ATP goes down the sodium potassium ATPs doesn't function properly the sodium inside the cell goes up uh, water inside the cell goes up and cell lysis occurs clinical correlation of Glycolysis, pyruvate dehydrogenase deficiency. Do you guys remember that pyru? I said before that pyruvate dehydrogenase is used to convert pyruvate into acetyl coenzyme, right? So you guys remember that pyruvate into acetyl coenzyme. So when this enzyme is deficient, pyruvate goes up and because the pyruvate is increased inside the cell, lactase goes up and this, uh, this results in lactic acidosis. And when aldolase is deficient and pyruvate kinase is deficient, uh, the well, what I said about this thing happens. In RBCs, uh, the biconcave shape is lost, it is phagocyzed, and it is lysed, and hemolytic anemia occurs. And when muscle PFK goes down, they have a very low uh, exercise capacity because ATP is synthesized uh, in, like, in a very low level. And when poisoning happens, this is when mercury or arsenic ions enter, it inhibits pyruvate dehydrogenase. Then again, pyruvate goes up, lactate goes up, and lactic acidosis occurs. In alcohol alcoholism, what happens? When a person uh, drinks like too much alcohol and everything, it inhibits the absorption of thymine, uh, so they become thymine deficient. So this thymine is an important cofactor of pyruvate dehydrogenase. So when this uh, cofactor is reduced, uh, pyruvate is further accumulated, lactate is accumulated, and then lactic acidosis occurs. Right? So uh, that happens. Okay guys, so that is my very small lesson on glycolysis. I hope you guys understood it well. And if, if there's uh, any questions, please comment down below. I will try to answer them. And thank you so much for joining and have a nice day.